In this video, I'm going to show you how to combine geometry script and editor utility widgets to build your own uh, small mesh utilities in Unreal Engine 5.0. So uh, first I'll show you an example of what we're going to do here. So here's a scene. If I switch to the collision view, you see that none of those objects have collision geometry. So instead of authoring that, I just want to make it so the player can't walk through this. So I'm going to create a blocking volume around these objects. Uh, so I can do that by running my utility widget. So I'm going to right click here and go run editor utility widget. And you see that's going to bring up this little panel. And this is basically the widget we're going to build. I'm going to go over in the scene and select these objects. And I'm going to click the wrap button. And that is going to auto generate a kind of convex hull blocking volume for these shapes. So if I go back to player collision, I can see that now there's some collision shape there. And I can just undo and change things like the vertex count uh, to try and get lower or higher accuracy. I can turn that way up and get a much denser convex hull that's more precise. Uh, and I can do a bit of, oops, let me undo, a bit of offsetting uh, if I want, you know, some buffer around this area. Okay, so that's a little utility that we, you know, don't have another way to do in the editor, but you can build it yourself uh, using this stuff. So let's build the blueprint. So the first thing you would do is right click and go to editor utilities, editor utility blueprint, or ed sorry, editor utility widget. Um, and that would create a new blueprint. I've now I've already created it and done a little bit of the setup. Um, so let's just jump into that one. And when you open it, you'll see this designer view. So this is a, like a little GUI designer. So you can drag in things like a button uh, and put a label inside it. Um, I've already done that and made this button called wrap that you saw me use before. So I'm gonna just delete that thing I added. Um, and then once you've got a button, uh, you can compile and switch over to the graph view in the top right. And that's where the blueprints are. Uh, so then you'd find that button. Here's my wrap button. And then you'd be able to go down here and click on clicked, for instance, to make an event or on pressed. Um, I've already done on clicked for this button. And that's, uh, so that's gonna, you know, make the action happen. So I'll just quickly run through the parts I've already done in this blueprint because there's some kind of boilerplate -y stuff that I've shown before. Uh, first, we're just going to make sure we have at least one actor to run this. Otherwise, we'll just exit out. Um, it's going to create a mesh pool. So we're going to we're going to use temporary meshes and we're going to get them from this mesh pool. So we create one of those and set it as a variable. Um, we're going to create an empty mesh that we're going to store uh, the combined mesh of all the actors, just like I did in the bounding volume hierarchy videos. Then we're going to loop over the actors uh, and append the root component mesh from each one in world space to that combined mesh. So once that branch is done, now we have our combined mesh variable filled with all of the geometry. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is figure out a pivot point. So we want to uh, know where that is in 3D space. Remember, it's in world space. So this is going to be a world space pivot location we're going to use. So I made a little function to do that that I called get pivot for bounds. And it just takes in the bounding box and sets the output point to be the center of the x-coordinates, the center of the y, and the minimum z. So that's going to put a, the pivot at the bottom of the box. Um, oh, that's the, that's the completed one. Uh, so let's go back to the graph. So that's that branch. OK, now here's the next branch. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a new um, empty mesh uh, that I'm, we're going to store. So we're going to request a mesh from the pool. And then I'm going to do a convex hull, compute mesh convex hull on that node. Um, so I'm not going to um, set that as the target mesh. Actually, the target mesh is going to be combined mesh. So that's the one we want the hull of. And we want to store it in this one, this temporary one we allocated. Um, and I'm going to split this options pin. And you see it's got this option to simplify to face count. And I'm going to use that vertex count. Actually, it's, it should be, I guess, face count and not vertex to count. Um, I'm going to just wire that in there. Um, and that's going to give us uh, the ability to change how many vertices there are, or faces in the output convex hull. Um, okay, and then, but now this convex hull is in world space, so we want to translate it um, to be at this pivot location when we're done. So the way we do that is we're going to subtract the pivot location. Um, so I'm just going to drag in the pivot location. And the way we're going to do that is transform this hull mesh by the negative, so I'm going to split the struct here because we're just going to translate it by negative pivot location. So I need, um, it's kind of tricky to get these. I'm going to do subtract and then I'm going to break that pin and wire it to the other one. And that's going to be zero minus that location and that will 
negate that vector and we'll send that in as the transform location. Uh, and then I did the offset thing, so I'm going to do just finally an offset, apply mesh offset. So that's gave me the option to do the offsetting. I'm going to split this pin. Um, I've got an offset distance over here. Then I'm going to set that in as this target distance. And one thing you have to do here, I'm going to change this smooth steps to zero. Um, so the offset by default is set up to do kind of more complex offset problems. Uh, and setting that to zero is a good idea in this case. We don't want to do any smoothing as we offset it because um, they're convex hulls, so they can always offset correctly. If it's a complex shape, that's not always the case, and you need to sometimes smooth it a bit. Um, okay, and then that target mesh, we're just going to set it in this hull mesh variable so that we can use it in the next branch. Okay, so that's computing the convex hull. Now we want to emit the volume. Um, so to do that, we have the node that's create volume from mesh, create new volume from mesh. So we're going to send in the hull mesh is the mesh. Um, the and as the transform, we want to place it at the pivot location. Oh, let's get pivot location wired in there. Now the tricky one here is we need this create in world. We need to know what world to put that in. So to do that, um, we need to get the editor subsystem. Oh, uh, sorry, Unreal. If you type Unreal now, you'll see this node, get Unreal editor subsystem. And then there's a function get editor world on that node. So I'm just going to wire this in. Uh, and that's the world we're going to use for this. Uh, I'm, we can call this blocking volume, maybe. Uh, you don't have to fill it in. It'll automatically generate something. Um, there are some options here. So we can split that. You can see that we can select the volume type. Um, I'm going to set it to blocking volume, which is the default. So we wouldn't, we didn't actually have to do that. Um, OK, and then finally, we're going to clear the mesh pool. So that should be it for this blueprint, unless I made a mistake. So let's go back uh, and run our demo version. Right, so if we select these objects and click wrap, you see it generated the convex hull. Now one thing, if you remember the other one, there was some sliders. So I'll just show you how to set that up. Um, so that uh, we have to go back to the UI designer here and we're going to drag in a details view. Now a details view is um, a sort of general purpose thing in Unreal. That's how all these other panels are made in Unreal with all these settings and stuff like that. So what we'd want to do is we just want to expose uh, some variables in our graph side here in the details view. So to do that, we're just going to set so we can get that details view now. Oh, we have to compile once. Um, so here's the details view. And we're going to call a function on it set object. Uh, we're going to wire that up to the pre-construct. And the object we're going to set is self, get a reference to self. So that is going to pass the blueprint object itself in as the target of the details view. So that will expose all of these variables over here in the details view, which we don't want to do. We only want to expose the hull settings. So I'm going to go back now to the designer side, pick that object. And you see over here, there's ca categories to show. I'm going to click plus there. And then uh, I can type hull settings in here. And then if I compile, you'll see now the hull settings just even showed up on this side um, and showing the default value of the default blueprint. Now, in the other one, I had so multiple variables in there. So what I can do is I can drag this offset distance up into hull settings too. If we go back to designer side and compile, you see that now that showed up. Um, and if we go back to the viewport, you see it even updates the running instance. Um, so now I can select these three, uh, you know, turn up the offset and wrap, and we get that big offset, and we can, you know, crank this up and get a really more precise convex hull. Oh, I made two of them. Um, okay, so that's how you make this uh, editor utility widget, and this UI designer in here has a ton of stuff in here. You can make things like, you know, sliders um, and all sorts of other. UI elements and uh, use this to build quite complex things that, uh, you know, could even approximate things that you could find in modeling mode, the more complex tools you can find in there. You can even do things like get mouse events uh, and do clicking and stuff like that in the viewport. So thanks for watching.